So we've seen how to design state feedback control laws, and we've seen how to design observers. Um, all that remains is to put everything together. Um, so we said we can't actually apply our state feedback control laws because we can't measure the system state. However, we can estimate it with an observer. So let's put things together and um, just build our first state space uh, control design architecture, if you like. Um, so what, what's going on? Um, well, first of all, let's draw on the system that we want to control. So the system we want to control, it's got some inputs and it's got some outputs. So that's the output Y. The transfer function here is C SI minus A inverse B. So this is just our usual transfer function for a state space model X dot is equal to AX y is equal uh, plus b u y is equal to c x. So this is just an input output system. Um, some some transfer function here, and I'm going to put on some other things to kind of make the setup a little bit more complete. So typically you would have some process disturbance acting on your uh, your the, the input to your plant, and we talked a little bit about robustness and various other things that we could build in um, to our picture. I'm just trying to make things at least look a little bit like the, um, the, the feedback setup that we had when we were studying sensitivity functions. Um, so we have plant and some controller in the, in the feedback loop. So we've got some disturbances here. This is going to be where our control inputs come in. Um, so what happens? Well, we can measure this. Let's uh, draw this down here and let's put a plus and let's add some sensor noise in. So this is what we have access to. And we're going to have our observer first. So this our observer matrix L is going to go in here. And if we remember, um, our observer equation was x hat dot is equal to a x hat plus b u plus l and then y minus c x hat. So things are not quite right. We've got the y is feeding into our l, but we need it to actually be equal to y minus c x hat. So for sure we need something else coming in here. I've just added in some sensor noise so we never get y, we get y plus n. That's what's going on with this n here. And so we need minus c here. So we're going to sort of slowly build things up. So we need this signal here to be equal to x hat. If this is x hat and this is y then we've got the correct input to our observer, matrix L, and we know that this has got to hit some summing junction, and this is all, this has got to sum together with various other things to give us x hat dot. So let's keep drawing stuff in. We need a plus, so we've got our plus L y minus c x hat, hopefully, and B u, how do we get that? Well, we take something down here, feed it into a matrix B, and then sum it in. So yeah, we've dealt with this, we've dealt with this, we've now just got to deal with, we need to introduce an x hat and also um, deal with this x hat dot and this a x. And so what's the right way to do this? Well, the right way to do this is to put in an integrator. So we're going to have a 1 over s here. here. I'm going to call this x hat dot. So if this is x hat dot, that means that this is x hat. We just This just integrates. OK, that's good, because we needed x hat. So we're going to take x hat. We're going to feed it through this minus c. And we also need an a x hat. So we take this and we feed it through a, and we put it up here. So what we've succeed, successfully done in all of this is 
build a block diagram representation of our observer. This is our state observer. So, and it's got sort of all of the realistic things in it. So we've, we've got our um, control input U, which we know we can choose that. We haven't specified what it is yet, uh, but we're about to. We've got this output Y, which we can measure. This is subject to some noise. Um, and then this block diagram architecture is just realizing precisely our observer. And this is x hat. So what do we do then? Well, we know how to design a state feedback based on the true state. As long as our observer is pretty good, the true state and um, our estimate of the state are going to get extremely close to each other. So let's just uh, use our state feedback k. So this is this k matrix that we were designing with our state feedback. And let's just use as input to that our state estimate x hat. And hopefully what you can see from all of this, uh, maybe I don't know if this color will do anything. But you see, this or this whole lump here, this is our control system. Um, we could lump all of this together into a single transfer function. Um, and, and then we'd have things in our standard feedback framework. We'd have to do some things with minus ones and so, so on to get it in, in the, the same form as when we were studying sensitivity function. Um, but We'd have everything set up properly. We'd have our measurement Y. It would come in to our controller, and that produces our input U, which is then maybe subject to some disturbance, which is then fed into the plant. And so what we what we really have done here is we've sort of pulled apart that controller block into all the sort of gory details. And you can see that we've got within that controller block in this state feedback plus observer setting. We've got a kind of an initial bit which constructs our state estimate and then we've got a state feedback bit here. And this is quite a, a commonly used uh, control architecture and it's kind of the, the state feed or the, the state space architecture if you like. It consists of a, an observer and um, a state feedback matrix and an, a kind of a, another common feature that's common to more sophisticated methods as well is we have one method for designing the observer and one method for designing the state feedback and actually this runs quite this sort of theme runs through all sorts of quite advanced control methods um, so we're not talking about them in this course but you have um, what are called optimal control methods and they're what you do is you specify certain criteria that are supposed to quantify how well your system is performing. And those criteria might involve like how, yeah, how much disturbances get amplified or attenuated. So maybe you want the, the gain from disturbances to your output to be very small and you try to optimize your controller to make it as small as possible. Or maybe you take one of those robustness measures that I was talking about. Um, in the last lecture. So maybe we want to maximize our level of robustness to a particular model of uncertainty. And we try to design the controller that will achieve the maximum level of robustness. And optimal control methods, um, or state space based optimal control methods, will typically split such problems into a two phase approach. You have a, a problem you have a design problem for the observer and a design problem for the state feedback and together you can together they will give you the controller that's optimal for um, performing the, the the task that it was given so we've seen that in our state feed our pole placement exercise we use pole placement to place the poles of the observer and we use pole placement to place the poles of the state feedback and we did those two things separately. And actually, one of the amazing things that happens as a result of all of this is if we look at the closed loop poles of this system, so we've got a control law 
we, we had some open loop poles determined by the eigenvalues of A. We've got some closed loop um, poles. And the closed loop poles are just equal to the eigenvalues of A minus LC. So here by lambda, I just mean lambda of this thing gives me all the eigenvalues of A minus LC. So my closed loop poles are these. And also, so I get these and I also get the eigenvalues of A minus B K. So if you remember, when we designed our observer, we were placing these poles. When we designed our state feedback, we were placing these poles. And when we put the pieces together in this particular way, we end up with a closed loop system with closed loop poles given by the observer closed loop poles and the state feedback closed loop poles. So even though we designed them separately, and we actually even designed the state feedback for something different, we designed it based on the true state, not the estimated state, but still in the closed loop, we end up with the closed loop poles that we designed for. Um, and this sort of this decomposition of the problem into these two pieces works for this pole placement. Um, um, but it also works for all sorts of other optimal control problems. And if you take more control courses, you'll get to learn more about that. Um, in terms of showing this for yourself, there, I, th I think certainly there's a derivation in the basic course notes. Uh, it's an exercise I encourage you to do for yourself, just, just to have done it once. Um, and the way to derive this result is to rewrite the closed loop as a big state space model where we have the state x, so that corresponds to the state of the, the process. And also for your other state variable, you should use x tilde. So that, that was the variable I was using to analyze the properties of the observer. So not x hat, um, but x tilde. So rewrite all of the equations in terms of x and x tilde, and you'll be able to see that the closed loop poles must um, come from these two matrices and you get this separation um, of the two problems. Um, so I just wanted to, to sort of sh show you this and um, yeah that sort of wraps up our introductory lecture on state space. Uh -huh.